All right, so I'm taking advantage of this beautiful weather out here, and we're gonna talk a little bit about natural resources. You know, when I look around my backyard here and I look at my house and everything around me, I'm reminded that they're all made of stuff, and that stuff are made from things from the earth, and those are called natural resources. Now, natural resources are anything that we take from the earth that we use and we mine for a profit. And so this tree right here, well, that's a natural resource. Why? Because we use the wood in that tree to make things like that fence. And um, I take a look at the house right here and it's made of natural resources. I have the brick, which is made of minerals that are made of natural resources. I have the aluminum siding up here that's made of metal, which is a natural resource from the earth. Here are some wires and those wires are made of metal, which we extract from the earth and that we use. We could say that with just about anything that I can point to. Now there's my dog, Abby, right there in the sun. Now she's not a natural resource. We don't use living things like Abby to make building materials, but there are some living things that are natural resources like fish. We eat fish and that can be considered a natural resource. Now when we talk about natural resources, there are three different kinds. There's the renewable resources. These are things that we can use as much as we want and the earth can replace them just as fast as we use them, if not faster. Um, again, trees. Some trees grow really fast and that could be a renewable resource that we can use for building materials and paper and other things. Other materials grow really slow inside the earth or form really slow inside the earth. And there's my air conditioner. That's made of mostly metals. And it takes the earth millions of years to make those metals. And we can extract those metals way faster than the earth can replace them. We call those non-renewable resources. Now when you start to think about everything in our lives that are made of metals, everything from aluminum cans to all the computer parts that we have to our cars, everything in our houses, everything in our natural environment, the steel beams in our houses, everything. When we're using all that metal, in our building materials and we're using all that metal in our daily lives but the earth can't replace it as fast as we're using it that's a non-renewable resource it takes the earth so long to make those metals now there's something called sustainable sustainable is an interesting one because these are natural resources that we can use but we have to be careful with how we use them if we use them too fast they may go away but if we use them responsibly, well, then we can keep on using them in our lives, but we have to be, we have to make sure that we don't use too much of them. And we have to give the earth time for those resources to come back and replenish themselves. A good example of that is fish. There's a fish that people like to eat called Copper River Salmon. It comes from Alaska and there's a limit on how much of that we can farm out or how much of that we can fish every year because if we eat too much of it we won't give those fish a chance to repopulate and the population will die off but if we farm it responsibly and only take a little bit out every year then we can go ahead and keep on using it year after year after year as long as the population keeps on growing but if we use it too fast and the population shrinks and they can't reproduce they'll go extinct and go away that's a sustainable resource so three different kinds. We have renewable that the earth can reproduce or that the earth can form as fast or if not faster than we use it. We have non-renewable, which are resources that the earth kicks out that if we use too much of it too quickly, well, then they're gonna go away and that's non-renewable. And then we have sustainable, which means we have to be responsible in how much we use. We use too much, it's gonna go away. We use enough for our needs without overusing it, then it can be replaced as fast as we need it to be to still be around. Now, an important note here is that just about everything you can point to is a natural resource, either grown in the earth or something extracted out of the earth. Everything from the walls in your house to you know the, the, the barbecue right here to the, the trees around to all the minerals and rocks that we use for our building materials. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. All right, so let's talk about minerals real quick. What are they? Well, minerals are natural resources of the earth. And we take those minerals out of the earth, we mine them for a profit, and we use them in things in our everyday life. Let's go ahead and take a look at this pile of minerals that I have here. So I got a whole stack of minerals right here and they're all different. They're different shapes, they're different colors. Some are shiny, some are not. Um, these are all properties that we'll talk about later. 
But here's just a couple things that I want to talk about. Here's a mineral that everybody's familiar with, this one right here. Um, this mineral right here is called halite. Um, it's common table salt. You take this, you grind it up, and you use it as salt in your food. It's a very common mineral found in the Earth's crust. Uh, here's another one. This is quartz. And this quartz mineral is kind of cool because it's in your electronics. It's used for every LCD or liquid crystal display. Uh, you see it in glass, you see it in mirrors. This is one of the most common minerals on the face of the earth. Uh, here's another one. This one's called gypsum. Uh, without gypsum, you wouldn't have the walls in your house. They grind this up and it's the primary ingredient that they use in drywall or wall, wall board in drywall. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Um, here's one right here. It's kind of a cool one. It's called Galena. It looks different than the others. It's real silvery and shiny. It's also really heavy. It's got a lot of metal in it. So what they'll do is they'll melt this down and they'll extract. Yeah, Abby. That's right. Abby thinks Galena's cool too. They'll, they'll melt this down and they'll take the lead out of here. And they use the lead for various uh, building products. Uh, but they'll also use the lead in here to make batteries and stuff like that. Um, here's another one, this kind of pinkish looking one. This is the most common mineral in the crust of the earth. It's called feldspar. They use it for high quality optics and mirrors. Uh, let's see what else do I have here. Um, so I was looking for a mineral called copper, which I thought I had with me, but I don't. But everybody's familiar with copper. It's what we make our wires out of. So without the copper, you wouldn't be able to run any of your electronics. Um, here's another one. Here's calcium right here. Uh, they take this calcium and they grind it up and uh, they make stuff like antacids out of it. So when we take a look at these minerals, there's a whole bunch of uses for them. They're all a little bit different. Um, but the big thing about these minerals is they're also the key ingredients, not only in the building materials that we use, but they also go into making up rocks. Now, rocks, okay, yay, rocks. Well, you know, rocks we use for building materials too. Just take a walk in downtown Chicago and look at all the buildings and you're going to see beautiful rock patterns. Or maybe look at some countertops, like granite countertop. Granite's a rock. Let's take a look at granite. Just dumping all these rocks here. Here's, uh, here's the rock granite. And it's cool because it's a really easy example to see that it's made of different things. You can take a look at granite and see all the different colors in there. You see some pink, some smoky looking colors, maybe, uh, maybe uh, the little black speckles. And all those different colors, well, those are different minerals in these rocks. They're all different ingredients. So we could say that minerals are the raw ingredients that go into making up rocks. And in this rock here, we have about three different individual minerals that make up this rock, which is kind of cool because that now that's the relationship between minerals and rocks. The minerals are the raw ingredients and are also natural resources, but they're the raw ingredients that make up rocks. And granite's a really good example of that because you can clearly see those different colors in there. Yeah, some rocks, you can't see the individual colors. Some rocks look just kind of boring like this. They don't have much detail to them, but it's still made of minerals. Combinations of different minerals are found within these rocks. Sometimes you can see the minerals, sometimes you can't. That's all right. Now, when we talk about minerals, we're going to get into identifying minerals later on. But for right now, what you should know is that minerals are natural resources. And we take those minerals out of the earth and we use them in just about everything in our everyday life. From the materials that your bed is made out of, that you sleep in at night, to the machines that make the clothes that you wear, to the cars that you drive, to the computers that you use, including your iPad and your phone and your watch, to, um, to you name it, to the, the things that you cook your food in. Those are all made of minerals or natural resources that we take out of the earth. So are minerals renewable or non-renewable? It depends on the mineral. Some minerals absolutely are renewable. Some minerals can form faster than we can use them, like salt. Salt's a really good example. Other minerals, though, they form really slow in the earth and we can use them a lot faster than the earth can produce them. Aluminum's a good one. You know, we're all familiar with aluminum cans that we have our sodas in and monster beverages and, and Red Bull and stuff like that. Well, we keep on ripping that stuff out of the earth faster than the earth can reproduce those minerals and we're gonna run out of them or at least we're gonna run out of our ability to find enough to take and use in our everyday lives. And that's where recycling comes important. 
that's where reusing those things becomes important. When we talk about minerals, there's one more thing that we need to talk about. We talked about them as natural resources, what they're used for, but we also need to get into the five defining properties of mineral. And there are five things that we look at that makes a mineral a mineral. So those five defining properties of mineral, what are they? All minerals are inorganic, naturally occurring solids with a specific chemical composition and a crystalline structure. What does that mean? Inorganic means is that it's made from things that are not living, things that are more chemical processes than biological. What is naturally occurring? Naturally occurring means is that nature makes it. It's not made in a lab or a manufacturing plant or anywhere. Solid, it's not a liquid or a gas. Specific chemical composition, we know what it's made out of. It's made of the same repeating list of ingredients over and over and over. Salt is a good example. Salt is made of the two elements NaCl. And every bit of salt on the planet that's halite is made of Na and Cl. Same repeating list of ingredients. And crystalline structure, what that means is, is that the atoms that make up the mineral, they are in regular repeating patterns. So it's kind of like the beginning of a Flintstones cartoon where you see house, house rock tree house house rock tree house house rock tree that same repeating pattern is seen within minerals of the atoms that make it up so when we talk about minerals and minerals as a natural resource it's important to realize that there are a lot of minerals out there in fact in the earth's crust that very outside layer of the earth there's like over 4,000 known minerals but only a couple dozen of them are commonly found now why is that it's not because there are easily accessible it's not because we just can't find the others it's because of the abundance of the minerals meaning there's more of some minerals than others and why is that why doesn't the earth produce an equal number of minerals for all the minerals that are out there well it has to do with the ingredients that make them up now in order to understand that we have to look at the periodic table when we take a look at the periodic table, there's over 92 naturally occurring elements. There's really eight of them that are very common. There's eight of them that make up the majority of what we find in the Earth's crust, like silicon and oxygen here. Of all the elements found within the Earth's crust, silicon and oxygen make up the majority of the elements found in the Earth's crust. And that, with that being said, it's not a surprise that when we take a look at a mineral like this, like quartz, it shouldn't be any surprise that this is one of the more common minerals in the Earth's crust because it's made of two ingredients only, silicon and oxygen. And because those, those ingredients are so common in our crust, it's going to produce this mineral more often than other minerals. It's kind of like if you're looking around your kitchen. You know, you're looking around your kitchen, you're hungry, you want to get something to eat. You start looking at all the ingredients and you realize that you have like three loaves of bread and you have, you know, 27 uh, slices of cheese and you got one slice of turkey. Well, you're not going to be making a lot of turkey sandwiches because you only have that one slice of turkey. But you do have a lot of bread, you do have a lot of cheese, so maybe you can make a lot of grilled cheeses because that's the ingredients that you have and that's what goes into making up a grilled cheese. It's not saying that you don't have other stuff thrown in because maybe you have a few other things. Maybe you got some pickles and you throw a couple pickles into your grilled cheese, but that base ingredient is the silicon and the oxygen or the bread and the cheese. It's because those ingredients are so common, it will go into most of what you can make up. Well, it's the same thing for minerals. It'll take the ingredients that are the most common and those ingredients will be seen in the most abundant minerals. Now, other minerals like calcite right here, Calcite is a very common mineral in Earth's crust, but it doesn't have that silicon and oxygen. So just because a mineral does not have silicon and oxygen doesn't mean it's not an abundant mineral. But if we take a look at the whole list of all 4,000 minerals that are out there, the most common ones, well, they'll have very common ingredients found within the Earth's crust. So let's take a look at the makeup of those ingredients or those elements that make up the most common minerals. So of all the minerals that are found in the earth, there's eight of them that make up the majority. It's like eight of them make up of about 95% of all the elements found in the earth's crust. There's oxygen, there's silicon, there's aluminum, there's iron, there's magnesium and calcium and sodium and magnesium. You're not gonna have to know all of these, but what you should understand is that things like silicon and oxygen, they are so common in the crust of earth that that helps us understand why they are so commonly found in so many different minerals. Now, when we talk about minerals, there are two general classes. There are the minerals that you find in rocks most often. These are called the rock forming minerals. 
These are the minerals that are the ingredients that go into making up rocks. They're found in combinations together to make those rocks. And then there's the non-rock forming minerals. These are things that usually are found standalone. Like copper is a non-rock forming mineral. You don't find it very often in a lot of rocks. You find it just kind of by itself. And then we use it for our wires and stuff. But things like quartz, we find all the time in other rocks. And we call those the rock forming minerals. Just because a mineral is either classified as rock forming or non-rock forming, that it's more common than another one, that's not what it means. What it means is just where do you find them? Do you find them by themselves or do you find them grouped together with friends and other rocks?